So these media theories will make you question everything. So remember, this is for entertainment purposes only. Let's check it out. What will happen with President Biden and his presidential campaign? There are people out there wondering whether he should stay in the race. However, no prominent elected Democrats have said that he should drop out just yet. Nostradamus made a shocking prediction about Joe Biden, and it's happening right now. His ancient prophecies, shrouded in mystery, suggest dramatic and unexpected turns during Biden's presidency. As we peel back the layers of these cryptic forecasts, they point to unsettling events that could shake our understanding of leadership and destiny. What staggering revelations are hidden within these predictions? Join us as we uncover the horrifying truths that could redefine the course of history. Forecasting the future. Interestingly, back in the day, the French astrologer Michel Nostradamus gained fame for predicting big global events like the rise of Hitler and the bombings in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Today, someone similar is known as the Nostradamus of U.S. presidential elections because he's predicted every election winner since 1984. This person is our special guest, Alan Lyman. Despite President Biden's debated performance at a CNN presidential debate, which many called a failure, Lyman still confidently predicts that Biden will beat Donald Trump in the upcoming elections. Well, isn't this wrong now? <laughs> I, didn't, I don't think he's seen the surprise uh, turn of events, did he? <laughs> but uh, let's, let's hear what the theory was anyway. This bold prediction has surprised many leaving both supporters and skeptics eager to see if his streak will continue. But why trust Lyman's predictions? Presidential elections in America are often more about how well the governing party has performed rather than just how good their campaign is. This brings us to the main question. Should we trust Lyman's forecasts and could he be wrong this time? Lyman, often called the Nostradamus of U.S. presidential elections, got this nickname because he's been so accurate in predicting elections much like Michel de Nostradam, a famous French astrologer from the 16th century. Nostradamus became well known through his book, Les Prophecies, which contains 942 vague verses that many believe predict future events. These prophecies have been both celebrated and criticized for their broad and sometimes unclear nature. But they've fascinated people because some predictions seem to match real historical events. But this isn't the most intriguing part. As we explore this comparison and discussion, we aim to understand not only the historical impact of figures like Nostradamus, but also the modern implications of predictions in today's political landscape. Henry, known for being strong and athletic, sadly died young in his 40s. He loved physical activities like hunting and jousting. His passion for these sports was so intense that it eventually led to his death. In the summer of 1559, there was a big jousting tournament to celebrate a peace treaty. Unfortunately, during this event, Henry faced a younger soldier. During their clash, the soldier's lance broke, sending sharp splinters flying. So, sadly, some of these fragments hit Henry in the eye and skull, causing fatal injuries. Around the same time, a man named Nostradamus, known for his writings about future predictions, reportedly foresaw Henry's tragic accident. Years earlier, he wrote about a young man in a contest who would injure an older opponent, hitting him in the eyes through his helmet and causing two deadly wounds. Some people believe this prophecy is accurate, but others argue there are differences. Nostradamus mentioned a battlefield and a duel, which doesn't exactly match the friendly tournament setting. Some followers of Nostradamus think he predicted even more significant historical events. They believe he foresaw the rise of Adolf Hitler, describing a poor child in Western Europe who would captivate many with his speeches and gain global fame. Another prediction supposedly hints at World War II, including the bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. He described an unexpected horror destroying two cities, which might refer to the atomic bombings. After these bombings, Nostradamus's writings also talk about ongoing hunger and disease, possibly referring to the radiation aftermath. He mentions people struck down by metal, which could mean the planes that dropped the bombs. Let's meet a man who predicts elections with surprising accuracy. Alan Lichtman's predictive power. Moving to more recent times, there's talk of a modern day predictor similar to Nostradamus, Alan Lichtman. He's known for accurately predicting US presidential elections. Lichtman has correctly predicted nine of the last 10 elections using a method called the keys to the White House. 
As the next election approaches, many are wondering if Lickman will continue his streak of accurate predictions with his analytical approach. Joe Biden and Donald Trump are big names, but let's talk about Alan Lichtman, a history professor at American University in Washington, D.C. Lichtman has been predicting elections for over 40 years, starting in 1981. Back then, he was a visiting scholar at the California Institute of Technology. He teamed up. Has anybody else heard of this? I've never heard of his predictions or anything like that. Now, don't get me wrong. I wasn't always big on the news, politics, and all that type of stuff until here recently, which makes me think I'm starting to get a little old. But, you know, I've never heard him, so I, I'm definitely going to look him up. And then my second thing is, are we going to give him credit? If he chooses, if he was choosing Biden for this election, are we going to give him credit for the unforeseen changes that happened, switching from Biden to Kamala? And if she wins, then are we going to give him credit, still give him credit for getting it right? with Vladimir Kalis Barak, a Russian scientist who was good at predicting earthquakes and interested in U.S. politics. Together, they created the 13 Keys to the White House, a system that looks at whether things are stable or changing to predict presidential elections. When Americans vote in November, they're not directly voting for candidates like Trump or Biden. Instead, they're voting for electors in the Electoral College. Lichtman's 13 Keys method uses a mix of historical political stability and current events to predict election outcomes. Lichtman once joked that he discovered the keys by accident. He said, I'd love to tell you that I came up with my system through extensive research and thoughtful reflection, but that would be far from the truth. The keys are true false questions that look at whether the current party in power will stay. These questions consider things like the economy, social stability, major policy changes, and the appeal of the candidates. If six or more keys are false, it suggests that the party in power might lose. What does that make it sound like though? You know what I mean? And I don't want this to come off the wrong way, so don't nobody take it the wrong way, but doesn't it make it seem like the vote doesn't, our vote doesn't count? When you say stuff like that, if this checks off, this checks off, this box checks off, this box checks off, this person is gonna win. Like, and, and with recent things, remember, Hillary won the popular vote, but she didn't win the election. And then the whole electoral college thing, I learned that back in, I want to say it was uh, middle school when my teacher said that to me about the electoral college and how they have so much control in different things and are able to do certain things. Like... <laughs> The, the more you start listening to some of these media theories, the more you start connecting some of the dots. Unlike Nostradamus, whose predictions are mysterious, Lichtman's method is based on facts. It looks at things like economic indicators, public opinion, midterm election results, the strength of challengers, inflation rates, and foreign policy successes. Lichtman's model has been very successful, accurately predicting almost every presidential election since 1984. Lichtman and Kalis Barak first published their work in an academic journal, catching the eye of a science reporter from the Associated Press. This led to a feature in the Washington Post titled, Odd Couple Discovers Keys to the White House, which grabbed public attention. Lichtman first tested his 13 keys in a prediction published in the Washingtonian Magazine in April 1982, marking the beginning of his career as a well-known election forecaster. Despite all this, Lichtman's success isn't just about luck. His method combines historical analysis with current events, making it a unique and reliable way to predict elections. Even though the country was going through hard times with a weak economy and people weren't very happy with the leadership, Ronald Reagan was still expected to win the next election. This was predicted by Alan Lichtman, a well-known history professor at American University who had accurately predicted presidential elections for 40 years. His forecast surprised many people. Soon after making his prediction, Lichtman was invited to the White House. He met with officials like Vice President George H.W. Bush and strategist Lee Atwater. They were curious about what might happen if Reagan decided not to run again. Lichtman told them that without Reagan, the party would lose important advantages, especially his charm and appeal. He said that without Reagan's charisma, George H.W. Bush would have a tough time comparing Bush's charm to an empty New Jersey shopping mall on an early Sunday morning. Not very appealing. Next, see how a leader's charm can sway a prediction. 
how Reagan's legacy shaped elections? This comparison seemed to calm some of the White House staff, though it underscored how much Reagan's personality meant to the party's success. Lickman's accurate predictions came from his keys to the White House system, which some people thought relied too much on personal judgment. But Lickman stood by his method, saying it was based on historical data and systematic evidence-based judgments, just like other historical studies. His predictions kept proving right. In the 1988 election... It's not like some of the people I know who, who screams that a lot of times the election is, is like a popularity contest, like you're in high school or something like that. A lot of people feel that way, you know? It's just like, oh man, they love this person so much. And then you he keep hearing the word charisma get tossed around. So it makes you think that. And even though Bush was behind his Democratic opponent early on, he used Reagan's legacies, peace, a good economy, domestic stability, and better relations with the Soviet Union to win the election. Over time, Lickman's forecasting method earned respect. When complex mathematical models and political forecasting failed, experts saw the value in combining statistical analysis with informed judgment. Lickman's influence grew as his methods were proven right again and again. He became a popular speaker at forecasting conferences, wrote articles for top academic journals, and even consulted for the CIA on predicting foreign elections. Despite high approval ratings after the Gulf War, Lickman... Now that's scary. Now, when you link with the CIA, now I'm starting to think, okay, what's their interest in this? Hmm? Why do they need to figure out? Do they need to know, okay, this is the person that we're going to be dealing with? Okay, we need to get this person in pocket and this person in pocket so we can start keep moving behind the scenes and doing some of the things that we're doing off the books? That's what that makes me start being like, whoa, why is the CIA intervening? Lickman predicted that George H.W. Bush would only serve one term as president. This bold prediction made top Democrats hesitate to run against Bush. However, when Kay Goss, a special assistant to Governor Bill Clinton, called Lickman to check if Bush could be beaten in the 1992 election, Lickman's assurance encouraged Clinton to run. Clinton went on to win the Democratic primary and the general election defeating Bush. Four years after his presidency, Bush reflected on his loss with family and friends as he returned to life as a private citizen. The Clintons have always admired Alan Lickman, a political analyst known for correctly predicting the outcomes of most U.S. presidential elections. He has a track record of getting nine out of the last 10 elections right, but he faced his toughest test in the controversial 2000 election, where he predicted Al Gore would win. Although Gore got more popular votes, he lost the Electoral College to George W. Bush. Lichtman argued that his prediction was still correct because the election was unfairly influenced. He pointed out that many ballots from black voters, who mostly supported Gore, were thrown out. In a report to the United States Commission on Civil Rights, Lichtman said that about one in every nine to ten black voters' ballots were not counted, compared to one in 50 for white voters. Most of these discarded ballots were not due to the famous hanging chads, but overvotes. This happened when voters punched a hole for Gore and wrote his name on the ballot to make sure their vote counted, but this led to their votes being discarded. Political scientists later reviewed the election and agreed with Lickman, saying Gore should have won by several thousand votes based on voter intent. Lickman stood by his 2000 prediction, saying not all predictions can be clearly right or wrong, leaving room for debate. He believed his record was still strong, claiming he was correct in all 10 predictions, with the 2000 election being a unique case. But this wasn't the worst part. Despite this controversy, Lichtman has kept an impressive track record. Even if you consider his 2000 prediction wrong, getting 9 out of 10 elections right is still quite an achievement. Lichtman's prediction skills were tested again in the 2016 election when he predicted Donald Trump would beat Hillary Clinton. He based this prediction on the contest key, Bernie Sanders' strong challenge against Clinton, the absence of an incumbent, and the Democrats' poor performance in the 2014 midterms. Also, the lack of major successes in domestic or foreign policy after the Affordable Care Act and Osama bin Laden's death contributed to his prediction. Lichtman foresaw that Trump, a former reality TV star with no political or military experience, would win in a surprising turn. Predicting elections is tricky, especially with unexpected events. Predicting the unpredictable. 
Lichman explained that predicting elections isn't simple. After the election, Lichman got a copy of the Washington Post with his earlier prediction. Donald Trump had written a note on it saying, congrats, professor, good call. In the same talk, Lichman also predicted Trump would be impeached. He saw that Trump would have problems managing the coronavirus outbreak, which would create big political challenges for him. Even though Trump recognized Lichman's prediction, he didn't fully understand the importance of the keys Lichman mentioned. These keys show that good governance is more important than just good campaigning. Lichman pointed out that Trump's handling of the pandemic was not good. Trump tried to manage the crisis with words instead of actions, leading to his loss in the 2020 election. Lichman shared this model, which is one of three main forecasting models at a meeting of the American Political Science Association. Then the focus turned to what Lichman predicted for Joe Biden in the 2024 election. Lichman has recently spoken at major financial and academic forums around the world. Despite doubts about polls that predict Biden might lose to Trump, similar doubts he faced when forecasting Ronald Reagan's win over Walter Mondale in 1984, he noted that Reagan was underestimated because of his age, just like Biden today. Lichman hasn't made his final prediction yet, but mentioned his model, which uses 13 key factors that have accurately predicted presidential outcomes since 1984. I am seriously going to look him up now. Like, first of all, I need to verify that this ain't just theories floating around. But then I want to see his prediction. I also want to read the 13 keys and look into that and see. Because we've all had our theories and speculations on whether or not our vote counts and whether or not, you know, different thing matters. What really matters and what will lead to us knowing who will win the presidential election. We all have those different theories, conspiracy theories, speculations, you know, just based on certain things that have happened. We've seen, we've witnessed and the lies that have been told to us. So we always walk into it knowing that. But I want I want to see where he's headed, and I probably will pay attention to him if a lot of this lines up. I'll probably pay attention to what he's saying and talking about along with the election. Can't even lie to you. <laughs> he said that for Biden to lose, several things would have to go wrong. A recent Reuters survey showed that 41% of U.S. voters preferred Trump's economic policies, while 34% liked Biden's. Lichman warned against relying too much on early polls because they only show the current situation, not the final election result. He mentioned that as the current president, Biden has a slight advantage according to his model with two keys already in his favor. While he hasn't given a final prediction, he reminded everyone about his accurate forecast of Trump's 2016 win and George H.W. Bush's comeback in 1988. This shows the importance of looking beyond polls and expert opinions. Lichman plans to announce his final prediction for the 2024 election early in the election year, promising a detailed analysis based on his established model. It's clear that President Joe Biden has a big advantage because he is already in office and easily won against lesser known opponents in the Democratic primary. This gives him a strong lead, meaning six more things would need to change for his reelection to be at risk against Donald Trump. Alan Lichtman, who created this prediction model, believes that vice presidential picks or last minute surprises in October won't. I'm about to look him up on my phone while the video is going, bro. I, it's, it's just hard for me not to look because I want to know. And I know a lot of y'all done paused the video and I don't have that benefit. Yeah, y'all have paused the video and looked up what his, his prediction or if it's come out yet. Y'all already beat me to the punch. But I want to know what his stance is on Kamala and if he thinks she's going to win or Trump's going to win. You know what I mean? So... Let's keep going, but I'm gonna be looking on my phone a little bit. Don't change the election results. He knows no model is perfect, but sticks to his view. This week, a jury was chosen for Trump's criminal trial in New York due to payments made to an adult film actress. Lichman stood by his model, which uses historical trends from 1860 to 1984. These trends look at social changes, economic shifts, and political developments. While Lichman trusts his model, he admits it has limits because it was made by humans. This year is different because a major party candidate is on trial. Lichman thinks a conviction, which he sees as likely, could really change how elections usually work. 
His model doesn't fully consider what might happen if Trump is convicted or jailed. These unusual events challenge the accuracy of Lichtman's model for this year's election. As everyone focuses on November 5th, Lichtman feels the pressure. He is anxious about possibly facing more criticism if his predictions are wrong. Now, as debates heat up, see how tough making predictions can be. Clash of Titans, Biden versus Trump in the fiery debate. In the middle of all this, a recent presidential debate showed Biden struggling for 90 minutes against Trump. Even Biden's supporters said it was a poor performance. Biden looked physically weak, his voice was faint, and his arguments were unclear. He often seemed confused with a blank look as Trump attacked. This debate added more uncertainty to the election, making Lichtman's job even harder as he tries to predict the outcome. The national debt is a problem that has confused many people. And so far, no one has fully understood President Joe Biden's plan. Recently, many members of the Democratic Party have shared their worries, hinting that it might be time for new leadership. In response to these criticisms, President Biden has made it clear that he will not resign just to satisfy his critics. Meanwhile, several party donors have said they will stop funding unless a new candidate is found to challenge Donald Trump. Political historian Alan Lichtman remains doubtful that Trump could beat Biden. He believes the talk about Biden's age and supposed tiredness is exaggerated. Lichtman thinks that if the Democrats want to keep the presidency in 2024, Biden needs to be their candidate. He strongly disagrees with top Democratic activists who think that at 81, Biden shouldn't run for re-election, especially after what many saw as a weak debate performance against former President Trump. This debate, filled with tension, brought new focus to whether Biden is fit enough for another term. Despite these concerns, Lichtman surprised many by sticking to his original prediction in a recent CNN interview. He argued that replacing Biden would be a big mistake for the Democrats. Lichtman explained that such a move could hurt the Democrats' chances in the next election. His strong opinion in such a heated situation shows just how divided the party and the broader political scene have become. But the challenges didn't end there. The intense debate over Biden's fitness and the growing pressure from within his party highlight the deep divisions and the high stakes of the upcoming election. Alan Lichtman talked about how thinking debate performances can predict election outcomes is totally unfounded. He I ain't gonna lie, man. That moment in time, when you think back to it, how, how scary that was, seeing Biden up there on that debate stage and, and just looking at it and looking at him and then questioning his health and his cognizance and, and different things. And that, that was nerve wracking. A lot of people were just out making jokes, but I was worried. I was like, bro, this, this person is the president of our, like, are you serious right now? Like that was, I, I don't care who you was or whose side you were on. That was nerve wracking. That was nerve wracking. He explained to his audience that reliable signs for predicting election results usually involve things like whether the candidate is already in office, the state of the economy, and whether there are third party candidates. Debate performances don't fit into these indicators. Lichtman also mentioned the 1984 election, pointing out that former President Ronald Reagan won big across 49 states despite being older and not having great debate performances. Lichtman shared with the journal why he thinks Biden already has seven key advantages for the Democrats. These include being the current president, having no serious challenges within his party, not facing an economic recession during the election year, strong long-term economic growth, important policy achievements, no major scandals, and facing a challenger who lacks charisma. But this wasn't the worst part. Lichtman warned that if Kamala Harris were to replace Biden as the nominee, the Democrats could lose two critical advantages, incumbency and no serious primary challenge. The only way Harris could keep these advantages, according to Lichtman, is if Biden resigns early enough for Harris to become president months before the election. This would allow her to claim the incumbency advantage. Now, this is interesting, right? Because I looked him up on the phone, like I told y'all, and he is, he is talked about and has been looked to about this whole election, right? And it, it says right now on Newsweek that U.S. polling Nostradamus identifies two Harris weak spots. So it may be the ones that they're talking about in this video. It says that Alan Lichman has identified two potential weak spots in the campaign for the White House. Um, blah, blah, blah. It's talking about who he is. 
So I've been saying for some time that the two farm policy keys are shaky, but I don't think he's it's still saying he hasn't made a prediction yet. So a lot of y'all probably have looked it up and have seen that by now. Um, it talks about his third 13 keys. I'll run through them real quick. Party mandate, no primary contest, incumbent sinking re-election, no third party, strong short-term economy, strong long-term economy, major policy change, no social unrest, no scandal, no foreign or military failure, major foreign or military success, charismatic incumbent, and uncharismatic challenger. So those are the 13 keys. Um, and that's pretty much it. But yeah, the headline was like, he just sees two shaky spots and he hasn't made his prediction. So that's good. I'm glad he hasn't made his prediction yet. Before we check out the rest of the video, I'm glad he hasn't made his prediction yet so I can follow along with him along with, this will give me something else to have to get to watch along with this election and see if it's any merit to what they're saying about him in this video. And Biden could help by endorsing her and transferring his delegates to her. What do you think about the impact of political predictions? Should we trust forecasters like Alan Lichtman despite the complex nature of elections?